hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well so guys in this video we are going to do the preparation of technical assessment cluster 3 which is going to be a c sharp so in c sharp we have different sections okay so out of those other two sections that is my sequel and the coding part i have already covered in a separate video so this is we in this one we are only going to discuss about the programming concept so make sure that you watch the video till complete end and regarding your preparation about my sequel and html part you can check other videos in the playlist okay if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet because i regularly post these kinds of helpful videos for all of you there is this complete playlist on cognizant preparation which will be very helpful for your upcoming gen c preparation so make sure to check this too there will be a lot of previous year questions that are discussed in this playlist okay so let's now start with our today's video so let's start with introduction to c sharp programming and then we will move on to the code snippets first of all c sharp is modern object oriented programming language developed by microsoft as a part of the .NET framework, it is widely used for dev desktop application, web development and game development using Unity. Some of the key features of c -sharp that we have are object oriented, supports encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism, type safe prevents type mismatches, improving read reliability. Next is automatic garbage collections, manage more memory efficiently. Cross platform with .NET Core, c -sharp application can run on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Okay. So let's now move on to problem solving part where we will look at the coding part also. See, first of all, understanding the problem statement is important. Okay, so you have to understand the requirements and expected output, what it is expecting. Break down your problem into small logical steps and try to achieve them. Choose the right data structures and algorithm and write the efficient and optimized code wherever possible because that will pass all your test cases and your code will be optimal and will run in the least amount of time. Now let's see this code that we have which is finding the factorial of a number okay so how can we okay first of all let me tell you how to find the factorial of a number normally in mathematics so if we have 3 as the number what we will do 3 into 2 into 1 so we multiply the number with one smaller number and then we will do this until we reach 1 okay so that is the basic concept what we are doing here is we are uh, we are we have created a recursive function okay to calculate the factorial so this is our recursive function static int factorial and then we are mentioning the number for which the factorial needs to be calculated then we are checking if n is equals to 0 this is our breaking condition or base condition because 0 factorial is 1 this is also getting satisfied and also whenever we reach 0 we will stop uh, like calculating and this will be our breaking condition to come out of the uh, loop okay or function so see uh, this is the base condition then what we are doing is if it is not zero then what you need to do n into factorial of n minus one which means you have to recursively uh, call the function so three into factorial of two right then again for two it will be factorial of one right so and then for one it will be factorial of zero and we know factorial of zero is one so this will return one so one into one two so this will return to two into two four and in this way we will get the output okay so this is your main function Okay, here we are just taking the input, okay, from the user and displaying the result, okay, in this way here. Hope you have understood it. Let's move on to the next one now. Here we are looking into a code for searching algorithm, okay. In searching, we have different types of algorithms. So, first one is our linear search. Linear search is basically nothing. Like if we have an array like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what we will do, we will search one by one, okay, onto the entire array. And whenever we encounter any, uh, our key which we are searching, we will return that, okay basically the position of that we will return so first what we are doing is we are iterating through the array okay here that is the for loop then we are checking if the element is matching the target okay at every point we are checking return the index if it is found okay for example if we have reached at this point and our key was also three so we have to return the index at this position which means you will return two okay if not even after running the entire loop uh, if the key is not found then you will return minus one which means key is not found okay whatever you are searching this is our main function this is the same sample array and this is the key that we need to find out. So we are passing uh, like we are calling the function linear search in that we are passing our numbers array and target value which is our key value. And then finally we are outputting our whatever the result that we have got. Okay. So pretty basic one. This is how we implement uh, searching in C sharp. Okay. Let me know if you have any points at any uh, in any section. Let's see uh, the next that we have is binary search. Okay, so binary search only works on sorted arrays first of all. So efficient uh, sorting with zero uh, order of log n time complexity using divide and conquer approach. Okay, so basically what happens in uh, binary searches, you will be having an array. Okay, 
in this way it has to be first sorted out and then it because binary search works on only on sorted array so then you will have uh, these two types of pointers okay you can say it as left and right okay initially you will start searching on this one okay and uh, you will calculate the midpoint of it okay then for example if your key is 4 you will see if your key value is uh, greater than this if it is greater then you will search only on this part and this part will be eliminated otherwise if your key value is smaller than the mid value then you will only search on this right part okay and then you will eliminate the other part so in this way every time you are breaking and eliminating the half of the part that is why the time complexity reduces to big o of log n okay so let's see the code for it so here what we are doing is first of all we have a function to perform the binary search okay it is taking an array and the target value which we need to search okay then here we are calculating the mid index as i told you right we need to find the mid value so we are calculating the middle index if target is found okay which means if array of mid is equals to target which if this is only our key then what we will do we will just return this value only which is because this is only our answer value if not uh, we will check if our array of mid is less than target if yes then we will uh, move right side okay if not we will move to the uh, this side okay the other side so this is the basic logic and if at the end even after doing everything if we don't got anything which means our key is not present in the array itself so we will just return minus one okay and this is the main function we have a sorted array we have the target which we need to search and uh, we are calling the binary search function by passing numbers and target into it and then finally we are logging the result that we are getting returned from the binary search function moving on to the next one now we have another sorting algorithm which is bubble sort okay so in bubble sort basically what happens is bubble sort compares the adjacent elements and swap them if they are in wrong order for example uh, like if you see uh, this is sorting okay basically not searching so for example if you have four two okay and then five six anything so what it will do it will take two and they will it will be comparing okay these two okay in uh, the it will sort these two first and ar arranging them then it will move on to the next two and in this way it will keep on doing it until we get the sorted array okay so let's see what is happening here so first of all we have two loops here this is the outer loop this is the inner loop okay and then we are swapping if the elements is greater okay for example i told you right here it will check and if the element is greater then it will swap them okay their positions it will swap and this function will uh, like uh, loop iteratively and uh, because we are running two loops right so this will loop iteratively and finally we will have the sorted array that will get returned okay so this is our input array and this uh, here we are returning the sorted numbers okay hope you have understood it let's now move on to the next one string handling in c sharp okay so let's see how string handling works so see for string handling we have few like functions okay in c sharp so string handling involves operations like concatenation searching and manipulation what is concatenation for example if you have two words right okay the and the humble so what is string concatenation if you concatenate these two strings it will be the humble okay so something like that so common string operations are string dot concat it combines multiple strings as i gave you the example next is string dot split it splits the string into an array based on the delimiter next is your string dot two upper slash two lower which means it converts the string either to a lower case or to upper case whichever function we are using next is your string dot replace it replaces the occurrence of a substring and a string dot contains text it's a string contains a specific substring or not okay so see here what we are doing text to uppercase basically converting it to uppercase here in this one what we are doing lowercase so basically converting the string to lowercase here what we are doing contains words text dot contains okay so whatever the string that we have that is this one we are checking if it contains the words world or not if it if it is then we will get the true as the uh, like output next is your replace the text okay so in a string if we have a word so we want to replace it with the another word so we are using we are doing that okay so instead of hello world it will be hello c sharp hope you have got it let's move on to the next one which is exceptional handling in c sharp so see uh, exception handling uh, exception handle runtime errors gracefully basically so using try catch only we do the exception handling in c sharp also as we do in other languages so what's happening here is uh, first of all uh, this will be an exception okay if you see in dot parse will be the exception case for us and uh, it will cause the exception so once the exception will occur it will go to the uh, this uh, block okay catch block where handling incorrect input message uh, this will this is basically for handling the incorrect input okay handling incorrect input next is it will always execute okay because this finally will always execute at the uh, by the end of the execution so try block contains the risky code that we have 
and catch block handles the error part okay that is example is like converting a string into an integer and then finally block execute always even if an error also occurs then also it will occur uh, like execute moving on to the next one working with date and time in c sharp okay so c sharp provides date time and time span classes for handling date and time common operations are date time dot now gets the current date and time date time dot add days in date add dates to a date uh, and then date time dot parse string converts a string into a date time object and time span represent a time interval okay let's see the code that we have here so see first of all what we are doing getting the current date and time okay and then uh, it is just showing okay uh, using now we have stored the current date and time in the now variable and then we are showing then here we are adding 10 days to it by using the method add days and then find the time difference so if you want to find the time difference you can do it by this way okay like future date minus now so it will give you the difference between the two dates hope you got it next is your object oriented programming okay so in object oriented programming is an important concept in most of the programming languages that we have and uh, oops is a core concept of c sharp using classes and object the key principles are like encapsulation inheritance polymorphism abstraction okay uh, you can give it a read if you don't know what these are but i expect you that you should know all at least the basic concepts of uh, uh, object oriented programming because it will be important from your interview perspectives also now we have arrays and collections in c sharp arrays and collection store multiple elements efficiently arrays fix size data structure for storing elements of the same time list dynamic arrays that allows resizing dictionaries is store key values pairs for fast lookup and queues first in first out they follow stack last in first out they follow okay so here is an example of array first of all you can see we are creating an array which is having five elements and then we are writing the line uh, array and then using join we are showing the numbers then we have list here so here the list has 10 20 and 30 then we are adding 40 one more element to it and then we are displaying the output next is our dictionary so in dictionary we have like a, a key value pair so key value is like alice 95 bob 89 and then we are displaying those okay so this is the basic concepts uh, of arrays and collections next is our control flow statement so control flow statement manages the execution of code conditional statement looping statements and jump statements are part of it in conditional statements we have if else else executes uh, different code based on the conditions switch condition alternative to multiple if else statements looping statement so in loop we have different kinds of loops like for loop while loop do while loop and for each loop for loop iterates a fixed number of time while loop iterates uh, or executes which are con whenever condition is true do while ensures at least one execution before checking the condition and for each it traces to the collections jump statement so for jump we have break continue and return so break basically exits a loop or switch statement continue skips to current uh, skips the current iteration and moves on to the next iteration and return exits from the method and return the value that we have currently so guys, I have tried to cover almost everything it was very hard to cover a lot of course uh, because you know these are like individual topics in itself so i have tried to summarize everything in the least amount of uh, time possible if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section you can even join me on telegram and instagram if you have any other queries you can ask me over there you can please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet because there is a lot of content that is going to come in future which will be helpful for you so that's all for this video thanks for watching the video